What's up guys? This is Manoj Patani. I welcome you all on behalf of the Idiopedia world. I'm sure you guys are having a great time and certainly you guys are enjoying your life to the fullest. So Roger Federer again won the Australian Open beating Rafael Nadal and in terms of Indian sports, India leveled its series T20 with England by 1-1 just be Bumrah named hero of the match. And I'm sure that you guys also want to become hero in your respective lives someday. So you don't need to worry about the same. You will do so. Essentially and necessarily, all you need is to have patience and strive for what you are currently doing. Just have a firm belief in your capabilities and you will sail through. I assure that guys. And I'm sure that you guys are revising your topics time and again because that is essential to make you hero of your respective life in the field of chartered accountancy at least. Perfect guys with that kind of hope, belief and confidence in you. Let's move with the fourth presentation in which I'll be talking and making you understand related to the remaining topics of uh, dividend decision. By now we have already covered three of our major theories. I'll be covering two major theories in this particular presentation while the remaining two that is the Modgil and Miller and the dividend discount model I'll be covering in my next forthcoming presentation. So let's move with today's presentation. Theories on dividend policies, traditional position gram and dot we have already covered, Walter approach has already been done, Gordon growth model is also been done. In today's presentation I'll be covering Littner's model and the radical approach with you along with the bird in hand theory. And this dividend discount model and Mohit and Miller will be taken care of in my next presentation. So stay tuned with that and keep revising your topics time and again. Let's move to the first topic of the day and that is Lindner's model. So who was this person Lindner first of all? So guys Lindner's model is basically the kind of work which was done by Mr. John Lindner. He was a person who actually surveyed different a dividend behavior of several corporates and showed up that there are some of the firms who like set long run target payout ratios in their following and they have their managers which are more concerned about the change in the dividend than the absolute level. Dividends tend to follow some kind of earnings but dividends follow a smoother path than earnings. So these kind of the basic things and observation he was a person who was the first one to recapitalize and recapitulate these kind of theories. He did particularly like founded this Lintner's model in the year 1956 and his study was basically conducted into two stages. At the first stage he used to like finally like conduct a series of interviews with uh, major businessmen to form a view as to how they went about relating to their own company's dividend decision. And then across like having so many conducted for the interviews he finally had this kind of thing where he then formed a model on the basis of those interviews which could be tested on a larger database. So these were the things we used to take care of. And basically Lintner's model used to have like two basic parameters. One was the target payout ratio and the second one is the spread at which the current dividends are likely to adjust to the target ones. So from all those interviews we used to basically conduct, he used to find out like it emerged that their investment needs were not a major consideration in the determination of any kind of dividend policy. Rather, the decision to change the dividend was actually a response to a very significant kind of change in earnings which had disturbed the existing relationship between earnings and dividends. And likely wise, that is the only reason as to why Lettner basically concluded that the companies which tend to set very long run target dividends to earning ratios according to the position of their positive net present value project that they are actually available and the earning increases are not always sustainable and as a result the dividend policy is not changed until the managers can see that the new earning levels are sustainable. So these were the basic major observations which were being made by John Lettner only after having so much detailed work into the field of dividend and finance basically wherein he had like gone for taking about so many interviews with so many businessmen regarding their decision for dividend policy in their own company. So 
that was a brief about blend trust model before starting i used to have this kind of thing wherein i actually provide you some guidelines as to what a particular theory or model is about so that was the brief about it now let's move to the basic major part so this model was formulated by john lindner in 1956 as a very classic study for actual behavior john lindner surveyed dividend between behavior of several corporates and showed that the firm set very long run target payout ratios first of all managers are concerned more about the change in dividend than the absolute payout dividends tend to follow earnings but dividends follow a smoother path than earnings and dividends are sticky in nature by sticky i basically mean that the managers have a very reluctant towards like effect of the dividend changes that may have to be like finally reversed so that's why they are sticky in nature litter expressed corporate dividend behavior in the form of this following model so wherein d1 that is the dividend for year 1 or i should say the better one as expected dividend will be equal to d0 that is the present year dividend plus the eps into target payout minus the dividend which is paid during current year that's the current dividend into the adjustment factor so i can simply say about that the calculation and computation for the dividend which is expected to be paid in next year will be equal to dividend current dividend which is currently paid in this year plus the eps into target payout supposedly if i have the eps of like rupees 5 and the target payout of the same is like just 30% so my dividend for the next year will be likely be 1.5 in that case 5 into 30% for that 1.5 that is my current target payout ratio minus the dividend which we have already earned in this present year i'll be deducting the same out of it let's suppose the dividend for first year is just rupees 1 so my computation in that case will be 1.5 minus 1 that will be 0.5 and out of the same i'll have to multiply it with the adjustment factor so here in this adjustment factor will be like provided to in the question itself because that is something which is likely to be derived with a long uh, derivation so we won't go into that kind of fact because this nowhere down the line uh, any other question has been like asked in the ce final examination relating to lentness model so we'll have to study it accordingly keeping this fact in my mind so lentness model is basically like important for you to note that this forms the part of dividend decision however having said that the institute has never asked any question relating to lentness model in its past examinations so where D1 will be equal to dividend in the year one. D0 will be the dividend in year zero. EPS will be equal to earning per share and adjustment factor. If in case question arises for you in your examination, don't worry about the same adjustment factor will be provided to you in each and every course. So, guys, this was all relating to Lindner's model. Kind of work Mr. John Lindner has done. It's a remarkable achievement, and this was done basically for a classic study. for comparison being made by the dividends which were being paid in various companies businessmen so that was all about lentern model now let's move to our next model that is the radical approach so guys radical approach takes into consideration the tax aspects on dividend what kind of two taxation aspect is involved in any kind of dividend one the corporate tax and second the personal tax corporate tax is the one which is being paid by the company and the personal tax is the one which is being paid by the shareholder if i'll talk about the company's dividend policy it considers the fact that the tax on dividend and capital gains are taxed at a different rate the approach is based on the premise that if in case the tax on dividend is higher than the tax on capital gains then the share of the company will be attractive if in case the company is offering some certain capital gain obviously guys you have to pay less tax on capital gains definitely you will go for that kind of a company which is offering the capital gain rather than providing you the dividend why because the dividend payment is actually attracting more of the taxes so it's always better to go for a company which is providing you capital gain rather than dividend why because the taxation rate on dividend is higher than the taxation rate on capital gains and similarly if a tax if the tax on dividend is less than the tax on capital gains then in that case the company which is offering dividend rather than 
capital gains will be priced better. Obvious. Why? Because taxation on dividend is less than the taxation on capital gains. So this is basically what radical approach has to say. It's a very basic kind of an approach. Okay. Even this approach, like any question, has never been asked out of this approach in uh, any of the C final examinations. The major questions comes from three of the model policies, but we as CE finalists, well, like we'll never take any kind of risk as far as the knowledge point of view is concerned. We'll have to provide you each and every kind of a bit of knowledge where that can help you out in your CE final examination, and we'll have to ensure that fact that you cover your particular course completely. So probably that's the only reason as to why I included these two different theories as well in my segments because I don't want you. to suffer later on so keep in mind these two things these are the two theories which are like which have like, like never been asked but they form part of your course so lenta's model and radical approach are the ones i hope you got the complete clarity as to what these two major theories have to say regarding the dividend decisions so perfect let's move to the next segment and that will be wow this is a nice picture hmm correct guys so that's the bird in when hand theory so i didn't provide you any of the clues to like guess what this picture is all about it's very simple a person is having one bird in his hand and the two birds are actually watching him handling one from the bush so this is a very major and a very uh, good kind of a philosophical theory the bird in hand and by now you must have got like entire idea as to what the story was but still i'll have to tell you so i have to connect this particular story with your finance world so finance in terms of your dividend decision chapter so i included this in my segment because it's a wonderful story the story basically says that the bird in hand theory basically this was propagated by gordon and lindner into this dividend world i should say basically the finance world they assumed that the investors value a rupee of dividend which is received today more than the rupee which is expected to provide for in the future as capital gains so what they have to offer as far as this theory is being connected to the dividend they simply say that investors value a rupee of dividend which is received today more than the value of rupee of expected future capital gains so they have a simple ideology it's always better to have one in hand rather than two in the bushes so the burden theory which is being identified by myron gordon He was a person who argued that the investors perceive a rupee of dividend in the hand to be less risky than a rupee of potential future capital gains in the bush, and henceforth the shareholders actually prefer a rupee of actual cash dividends to a rupee of retained earnings. Very well, for that matter. That is why, because what is available to them at present is preferable to what may be available in the future, and obviously a person will surely go for something is likely to have. currently in his hand rather than for something which may be likely be available in future so why why a person should take any kind of chances absolutely not so gordon basically is of the opinion that the more distant the future is the more uncertain it is likely to be and if the bird in the hand theory is true then investors will would actually regard a firm with a high payout ratio as being less risky than the one with a low payout ratio all other things being in equal So therefore, the companies with higher payout ratios would be having higher values than those which will be providing the low payout ratios. This theory is basically like providing you the simple kind of things. So that was the theory. I'll just conclude it with the following points. Myron Gordon basically argued that the investors perceive a rupee of dividend in the hand to be less risky than a rupee of potential future gains in the bush. Gordon was of the view that more distant the future is, the more uncertain it is likely to be. And finally, the firms with high payout ratios would be having higher values than those with the low payout ratios. So, guys, this is a very uh, good kind of theory. You must have studied the same one in your school time. So, I just try to recapitulate and reiterate you this theory again with my point of view in relation to finance. Relating to the topic of dividend decision, I hope you must have like remembered your uh, childhood back again. So perfect, guys. With that kind of hope and belief, I'll just conclude my video with a dose of motivation, and that would say, 
I learned that we can do anything, but we can't do everything, at least not at the same time. So think of your priorities, not in terms of what activities you can do, but when you do them. Timing is everything. This quote was being mentioned by Dan Melman. So he has like provided you some kind of clarity as to what should be done and how to prioritize your things in the best possible manner. It's always and always relating to priorities, guys. It's always the same thing. So you have like got 10 things to do at a very same point of time. It's only you who can decide what should be the priority for each one of them. Currently, you can go for any of your good rides. You can go for any of the ice cream shots. You can go for any of the sort of thing. But it's you who is going to decide, okay, let's first read something good in order to ensure that we don't get flunked in our examination. So that will be your priority in that case. There might be another person who might be like spending some good time in weekend for some other places, enjoying some of the places. So that may be his priority. So it's always you who has to decide for your priorities. What should be the priority uh, that should be given some certain leverage or advantage right at the first moment of time. So it is you who is going to decide. So decide your priorities in the best possible manner which can provide you the best advantages. So that way you can actually go about taking one thing clearly in your mind that yes, you are going to certainly succeed one day because you are actually trying to provide for level best your priorities right on track and right on time. Timing is everything for that and you will have to make your timing well. Perfect guys. Thank you. On behalf of the Aeripedia world, keep interacting via questions, queries, the YouTube comment boxes. We love to hear from your end and stay connected. That will help us in understanding your needs way better. I hope you are enjoying your life to the fullest. Just enjoy it completely. Perfect guys. God bless you. Love you all. Bye. Take care.